So uh, we are going to start our next session now. Uh, Professor Hari Krishnan has already joined. He will take a session on introduction to meshing and understanding of block mesh. Okay, Professor Hari Krishnan is uh, is a faculty member in the Cochin University of Science and Technology in the Division of Mechanical Engineering. And he is also our esteemed uh, faculty partner of uh, the Open Form Team FOSI. So just after the theory session, you will also get a chance to uh, go through the hands-on sessions by Mr. John Pinto. You will have uh, sessions on creating 2D channel geometry and mesh in open form and grid solution and convergence in open form. So do not panic. We will do it this slowly one by one. So we will go with your pace only. We will not run. Okay. So uh, Professor Hadi Krishnan, over to you. Welcome to the workshop, yeah. sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. So before I begin, I just wanted to know and put from your side, especially there are one, more than 100 participants. So I just wanted to know whether you are already familiar with open form before the workshop or we are, are you very new to this workshop or not? So can you can just give yes or no in the chat box. Okay. So basically either you are familiar with open form already or you are a beginner. You can just mention yes or no in the chat box. Okay. So thank you very much, madam, for giving this opportunity. So myself, Dr. Hari Krishnas, I'm a faculty member in the Division of Mechanical Engineering, School of Engineering, Cochin University of Science and Technology, Kochi, Kerala. So let me introduce myself before I begin, especially my background. So I did my PhD from IIT Madras in 2019, broadly in the domain of post conversion. And I was also uh, working as a postdoctoral fellow in IIT Madras for almost two and a half years on broadly on the topic of multi-phase flow. So during the last 10 years, I was using various PFD packages like ANSYS Fluent as well as open form for doing my research. And I just wanted to show you a few things that I was doing in the last few years during my PhD and postdoc. So basically in during my PhD, I was working on a single phase flow in which I was using both ANSYS Fluent as well as open form for doing simulations that involve periodic boundary conditions. So we, I realized that there was some issue with the periodic boundary condition implementation in ANSYS flow and later I switched to uh, open form. So in open form, I modified an existing solver in order to add some source term in the governing equations and later on I validated that. So whatever you see in the left hand side in the first column, single phase flow is actually uh, the simulation results obtained from open, so open, form, uh, open form solver. And I was also working on various multi-phase flow problems involving Euler in Lagrangian approaches in which the second figure you can see droplet spread in a hospital room in which we have a rectangular domain, let's say a hospital room in which continuously droplets are injected into the room. So these droplets are considered as Lagrangian particles and there are some inlet as well, there are some, there we can see there is an inlet as well as uh, outlet and we were just trying to see how the effect of this inlet is going to influence the droplet spread within this domain. So this one I was using ANSYS Fluent for my uh, study. So the third one is based on Eulerian Eulerian approach in which I was basically using Eulerian Eulerian form solver for simulating particle cloud falling in pool of liquid in which so basically we have a pool of liquid and a particle cluster just like a uh, bucket filled with sand we are pouring into it. So we know that these particles, basically these sand particles will act like a fluid particle, right? So Eulerian approach has been used for simulating these kind of situations. So the applications are like dredging applications. So all these, that these animations are actually made using paraform or paraview. The, this is a three-dimensional contour isocontour. This is 2D view of that. Okay. So I just, so this is a brief overview of the content. So we'll start, I hope all of you enjoyed the forenoon session and we'll start with brief overview about CFD to begin with, especially with open form and very, very basic introduction to meshing. So within one hour period, I'm just give a brief overview about meshing and especially, and also mesh generation in open form. So what is computational fluid dynamics? So we know that any physical phenomena, what we essentially do, we use certain mathematical model uh, for modeling that physical phenomena with certain assumptions. So similarly, uh, fluid mechanics problems also we use certain assumptions and we model it and like we try to solve it, this mathematical equation. 
so the left hand side you can see is a flow flow over a four wheeler and the right hand side you can see the basic governing equation for known session i think madam already discussed about this basically navier stokes equation so all those equation the basic governing equation behind the computational fluid dynamics or fluid mechanics problem is known as navier stokes equation and we are trying to solve these equations numerically in computational fluid dynamics so we use computers for solving these numerical equations right so the assumptions are very very important in this uh, step if you take wrong assumptions we will end up with wrong results okay so what we essentially do as we discussed earlier we will have a partial differential equations in the form let's say you can see a basic representation of a partial differential equations in here uh, and we are you converting that into essentially into a set of algebraic equations algebraic equations in the sense uh, matrices so we will be finding unknown values unknown values and uh, by solving this matrix equations just a minute so these unknowns can be these unknowns can be temperature uh, if it is a fluid flow problem it can be temperature sorry it can be uh, x component of the velocity y component of the velocity z component of the velocity or it can be pressure and if it is a fluid mechanics problem it can be temper uh, if it is a heat transfer problem it can be temperature and sometimes density etc right so what are the applications of computational fluid dynamics starting from external flows internal flows uh, wherever we have heat transfer or wherever we have uh, force conversion natural conversion or even uh, conduction radiation etc we will be able to solve all those things we will be able to solve identify all those temperatures pressures etc with the help of cfd so this is first one is an example for external flow over uh, bluff bodies and second one is an example for euler and lagrangian approach in which you can see it's a, a hotel in which there is a person who continuously uh, eject or uh, inject particles that is into this atmosphere so essentially you can see he even he cuff or when we talk thousands of particles are injected into the room and in this particular simulation what they tried is they tried to see how these particles evolve how these particles settle within the chamber okay so this is a, also an example for cfd simulation and the third one is an example for uh, co conjugate heat transfer involving battery basically battery thermal management systems as we know that the electric vehicles the battery is one of the major thing and operating regime or operating temperature range for the electric battery is very very essential very 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 crucial very very crucial for the performance of the battery performance of the vehicle so the cfd based analysis can help us to identify the optimum position of inlets outlets and optimum position of the battery arrangements etc for in the design phase and some other examples involves uh, the first one is an example for multi phase flow you can see a, a floating object Um, and the second one you can see it's a propeller in an open water so these are some of the examples of computational fluid dynamic simulations right right so there are different packages you can also make your own codes for doing for solving these kind of equations or it is also possible that we can also rely on certain packages so in general there are multiple cfd packages available basically cfd softwares like ansys fluent star ccm comsol autodesk simulia openform jerix etc out of this you can see the left hand side all those softwares are actually paid or commercial softwares in which you may have to pay some amount to access these softwares on the other hand the right hand side openform jerix etc are open source softwares in which you don't need to pay any amount to anyone you can start using it all all those files are available in the open source repositories will be able to access it there are two, uh, hundreds of tutorials available we will be also able to access those tutorials etc so here comes we will talk about why we should go for open source so first thing is basically it's an open source so free of course you don't need to pay any single amount and source code modification is also possible so typically in a commercial packages so ma major chunks or major codes they will consider they will keep it as a black box so solver level modification is very very difficult in a commercial software on the other hand for an open source based packages that is possible uh, we have our own control to modify the existing code and it is also possible to have collaborative developments collaborative development in the sense let's say i am a 
working in india i have a counterpart who is in amer us or europe and if it is a commercial software he should also have the license to access the software right on the other hand it, if it is an open source software that is not an issue parallelly i can work from here and i can work from there as well as we will be able to develop the solvers in a collaborative manner but there are obviously there are some disadvantages especially lack of documentation so documentation is a crucial part whenever you learn a software for an example ansys flu and typical user guide have more than 2000 pages on the other hand open form it is less than 300 pages so each and every options available in the commercial softwares they will be explaining the use explaining the applications explain the relevance etc on the other hand only major important parameters are explained in the user guide available with the open form and the second disadvantage is no gui actually the graphical user interface so uh, is not there you, can, you might be already experience we are basically using terminal commands for doing the operations right there are some text files we are trying to edit those text files if you want to change some parameters etc because of that you can say that user friendliness is very less as compared to commercial softwares so open form is a, one of the most popular finite volume based cfd package so it's a short form of open source field operation and manipulation and it's a c++ based toolbox and basically they use object oriented programming that is we use some keywords instead of writing the whole explanations so for example you just need to type no slip if you want to mention u is equal to 0 v is equal to 0 w is equal to 0 etc instead of that you just need to write only no slip so the no slip indicates it's an, it's an example for observe the two basic response okay so as i said earlier the main challenges involved in the open source software is documentation <laughs> right so in order to overcome this yearly open form community used to con conduct workshops etc once in a year so open and those workshop materials are already available online so these workshops involve standard especially they will mention about new so uh, solver additions and some example problems based on the new solver additions etc and also there are charma university is uh, used to conduct a uh, course on cfd with open form by professor professor hakan nilsen and his uh, class files student assignments all those things are actually available and from india iit bombay is also making a significant impact in the documentation part that i will explain in the next page and there are also some training companies like wolf dynamic cfd dyna etc in which some tutorials are available uh, free of course and some of them they actually provide at, at a particular cost and so nowadays you in youtube we have a lot of other contributors like joseph nagy and other uh, people who are actively involved in documenting making standard text uh, standard tutorials for the different different cases so what are the attempts from india as i said fosi is an uh, collaborative Uh, is an organization supported by national mission on educational uh, education through ICT in initiated in, by IIT Bombay so basically the basic purpose of this organization is to promote the use of open source packages in india and cfd is one of the team area in which they are working on so in the last 10 or 12 15 years they are basically working on promoting the application of open source softwares uh, by conducting workshops by conducting Uh, internship programs by conducting case study projects textbook study projects etc basically to give training skill to the people who are interested to learn this software and also a support, supporting ecosystem in our country during my phd i came to know about this during my phd and i submitted as a student i submitted a case study project there later on now you, know, you can see hundreds of case files are available there basically these case files essentially act as a starting point for your research let's say if you want to work on a particular topic so that the first step we should do we should try is whether similar cases are available online or not similar tutorials are available online or not so as you know if you are using commercial software it's always we can it is possible for us to start a case from scratch but uh, open source software is always better if you have a similar tutorial and modify only the point in which it varies from our case okay so these tutorials especially these case study materials we have case files as well as some documentations available in the repository and it will act as a starting point so if you are able to find a similar tutorial uh, of case study in their website then we can start 
from that case study and modify it according to our requirement okay so before we invest our time in learning a particular software especially these software we should know what are the job opportunities especially those who are students you should know you should have a clarity on whether whether we will get these are all these all are skills right so we should know whether we will get a job based on this so already some of the multinational companies started exploring the possibility of open form along the commercial software some of them are boeing pfizer gm amd 3m magna etc and not only that some startups like esi total sim sim scale even a small startup from india pandu cfd they are also working on open form they do the training they use open form uh, for doing consultancy works etc okay so in the four node session you already have a basic idea about what is open form and one of the major difference compared to commercial software is lack of gui so instead of that what we essentially did we use command line interfaces so there are some terminal windows so black screen in which you will be typing commands for generating the case for running the case for seeing the results seeing the results we are using a third party software that is known as paraview and we, when we type paraview paraview automatically load all those case files and you will be able to see the contours you will be able to see the uh, properties that are available right so that, that is a major difference between uh, commercial software because we don't have a gui and there are some institutes there are some companies that they actually develop gui also for open form so starting from sim scale sim flow blue cape helix simbot these are the companies basically they give a uh, gui only and basically the engine work engine engine behind this gui is actually purely open form okay so basically all these thing will help us to uh, make it more user friendly okay so this is a brief overview about open form and cfd so now we will move further so the thing the first thing we should keep in our mind is what is scientific computing or what are the steps involved in the scientific computing so we basically we essentially what we do we use certain methods to solve certain partial differential equations or ordinary differential equation by considering proper initial conditions as well as boundary conditions so whenever we use their method we should make sure that our results are correct because these are computers essentially solving matrices if you are making wrong assumptions if you are making some mistakes in the calculations it can leads to the wrong results okay so the first step involved in that is known as experimental validation so whenever we try to adopt a method let's say solve our ico form you are trying to valid you are trying to make a uh, case cavity tutorial so first thing we we should know is whether our results are matching with the experimental results so experimental results uh, if it is possible for you to have a, your own experimental system that is good sometimes it is not possible so what we do we refer literature especially established papers various research papers already published in the domain to compare our results with the experimental results so this is just an example uh, shown here so the box inside here shows the experimental flow i think this is an example for emptying a tank mm -hmm. what were about it uh, so you can see liquid air interface here and you can see the simulation part so this is uh, a red color one uh, indicates air and blue color indicates the water liquid and you can see more or less it is matching with the experiment so generally we say we we should do qualitative as well as quantitative comparison qualitative comparison in the sense this is an example for qualitative comparison that is visually we will be able to compare the results with experiment as well as simulation quantitative in the sense we will be comparing values one by one that is let's say you are just monitoring the level water level and say this is 0.8 meters 0.8 centimeters or something and here it is 0.79 so we can essentially get a quantitative comparison in the in which we will be getting some values and we will be also able to identify what percentage error we have right so qualitative as well as quantitative comparison is required before we move further so that part is known as experimental validation the second one is as you know already the first step in a cfd simulation is making geometry after that we will be doing meshing that is converting this domain into small elements or small meshes or small cells and how do we know whether this number of cells are sufficient or not we will conduct a grid independent study so we need to make sure that the, our number of cells considered is sufficient to get the uh, correct result 
so that pa- that process is known as grid independent study and the last one is known as time step independent so if you are doing unsteady simulation we should also know uh, so those who are we have, when we do unsteady simulation we know that we use certain time step to proceed right so how do we know that our considered time step is sufficient or not we will be we need to do a time step independent study also that means let's say you start with 0.001 seconds as a time step then you can increase it further or decrease it further you can consider 3 to 4 time steps and check some of the parameters whether it is varying with respect to a, a, whether those results are independent of the time step if it is independent of the time step we can go ahead with that time step okay so these are the three things you should essentially do whenever we do a scientific computing so when let's say you are doing a phd project or mtech project so the first thing is based on cfd simulation the first thing is we should know which solver we are using we should identify an experimental work or a literature and then we should try to validate it then grid independence and time independence study we should conduct so for some of the cases so some benchmark problems are already available especially there are some universities there are some organizations or even nasa they share their experimental results on like publicly online so some of the examples are like from nasa website some of the uh, experimental benchmark experimental results is already available online as an excel sheet you will get the values and university of manchester and ercofact database they have they have different cases of benchmark problems for cfd and yes these are the links for the validation case from uh, nasa labs okay so now we are slowly moving towards uh, cfd simulation so what do what are the major steps involved in the cfd simulation first thing is we should make the geometry so when in the for known session you use some commands like block mesh to generate a geometry as well as mesh okay so the first thing is we should know how to make a geometry and the second thing is how to make a mesh so third one is preparing the cases preparing the cases in the which so we should know which solver we are using so let's say it's a heat or tip simply fluid flow problem then we don't need an energy equation to solve so similarly if it's a laminar flow if it is a turbulent flow we should know which solver we are going to use and we should know what are the boundary conditions inlet boundary conditions outlet boundary conditions or other boundary conditions and the fluid property values etc and then we need to run the cases and during when you type ico form in the terminal what happens they are running the simulation and then we need to know our results we should get an idea about the results so we use that part is known as post processing the results in the sense we will be seeing the contours we will be seeing the velocity vectors streamlines etc so visually seeing all those things and reporting it that is known as post processing of the results so these are the major steps making geometry mesh generation preparation of cases running cases post processing the results etc so this is first one is this particular one is an example for a ship uh, meshing of a ship geometry and second one which is also possible para view is an example para form or para view is an third party software in which we use for visualization so it is also possible to make it much more attractive so softwares like blender is available so we will be so you can see how realistic is that animation so combining this that is para view with blender you can make attractive animations also that will be very useful for making presentations etc so all these figures actually i download it was available in inver okay so the first step is geometry generation so as i said earlier so we need to know the geometry so if you are comfortable with making geometry in any modeling softwares like fusion 360 solid works catia it is also possible that you can make it there and the second thing is known as mesh generation so we need to divide this domain into smaller pieces right and we will be applying the governing equation in each and every cells we will also apply the boundary conditions initial conditions etc then we convert essentially we convert this partial differential equation into a set of algebraic equations and these algebraic equation that is in the form of ax is equal to b will be solved with the help of computers that is simulation process during that process we will be solving the unknown values if it is a fluid flow problem you will be solving u v w that is x component y component and z component of the velocity 
and, and as well as pressure. If we have a heat transfer, we will have additional term that is temperature thing. Right. So the first thing is dormitory generation, and the second thing is known as mesh generation. So as I said, how are we going to identify whether the considered mesh is sufficient or not? I will just try to give an example, not related to this, but not related to CFD. But I hope it will be you will be able to easily understand that. So let us assume a case. I'm going to uh, make a circle from a set of points, and I'm just going to identify how good is my circle. Okay. So I will start with only four points. Okay. I assume that I can use only straight lines to connect this. So I am just going to make a circle. Instead of circle, I will get obviously get a rectangular box, right? So ideal circle in which I should get is something like this. Okay. And this is with four points. Now what I did? I have more points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight points. And what I am going to do, I am just going to use, I am just going to connect it again with straight lines. So as compared to previous case, it is slightly better, but not good. So now what I am going to do, I am going to consider 16 points now. So right now I have 8. So... I'm not able to make in a proper eight lanes. Okay. So it is obvious. Sorry for my bad drawing. So when we increase it to 32, you will start seeing that it is closely approaching towards a circle. Right? So when we increase it further, you will have more and more accurate circles. So what I am going to do is I am just going to calculate the area associated with each case. That is I will just calculate the area of the geometry I made here. So it's a rectangular box. If I know the length as well as uh, breadth, I'll be able to calculate it. So let's say this is A1 and this is A2. Similarly, this is A2 and this is A3 and this is A4, etc, etc, etc. And I also know the actual area. The actual area is pi r square, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find an error in terms of percentage. So that is A minus A1 divided by A modulus into 100. So it is obvious that what is going to happen when we increase the number of points. Okay. So this is percentage error. So when we increase the number of points, what happens? Uh, percentage error is going to decrease from initially let's say this is the initial point and you can see at some particular point or when it crosses a particular number let's say 64 or something that is going to be very very insignificant the changes the percentage error from the actual value is going to be insignificant or very very less so we can say that when we increase the number of divisions at a particular once it crosses a particular point that is going to be independent or the changes are very insignificant. So similarly, we should also do that is known as grid independence study. That is, if you are doing a cavity problem, this is just an analogy, not from CFD. Okay, this is uh, if you are using a cavity problem, first we should know we will just divide this domain into let's say four in x direction and four in y direction and one in let's say it's a 2D problem, then one in the z direction. Then what we will do? We will consider 8 by 8 or 32 by 32 etc and then we will see some of the parameters some of the parameters maybe um, we will consider a line here and we will get just compare the velocity at that particular point so this is the case for g1 that is grid 1 then we will also consider as another case that is g2 etc and we will be comparing all these velocity profiles one after another and we will also see the percentage deviation from one case to another case and we will decide which grid we should proceed so this is what happens when we do a grid independent study for a cavity problem. The first one is it's a very coarse mesh. Coarse mesh in the sense we have very less number of divisions in x-axis as well as y-axis. So this is an example for 5 by 5 matrix. I have only 5 divisions in the x-direction 
and phi division in the y direction and you can see this is u magnitude shown here so it is not that clear but and when i make it to 20 by 20 you can see some structures are getting clear but not that pro proper so this is an example with a 50 by 50 that is fine mesh so you can see all those structures started coming it if you further simplify it you will be able to get grid independent results you won't find any difference once it goes further so that point you should identify and you should select that grid for your further computation if you are comparing any properties let's say this is a, a non dimensional y, x velocity versus y this this is go, this is what going to happen so we will have g1 basically g1 is a this is not from this diagram okay so g1 is a coarse mesh then medium mesh fine mesh so you can see there is a small deviation between g1 and g2 and g2 and g3 it's more or less uh, overlapping so we will go ahead with g2 cells or g2 number of cells for further computation so what way we can divide our domain what are the different possibilities so there are <coughs> different types of meshes are available they are known as tetrahedral hexahedral prism pyramids polyhedral etc and what is the meshing hierarchy so we will start with the points especially the vertices and we will connect these vertices with lines then we will make surfaces by connecting these lines then we will make a cell volume By, by connecting these surfaces so we will actually see a simple example in the upcoming slide what exactly what do we mean by all these things etc okay so it is also possible to have the meshes in a different style so they are known as structured and unstructured grid first one is an example especially these two are an example for structured grid which we divide the domain equally here uniform rectangular grid you can see we are dividing this domain equally in x and y direction so all these cells will be typically hexa hedral kind of cells it is also possible to give non uniform meshing that means if you want to focus more on the boundaries it is also possible to have refined mesh in the boundaries so they are known as uh, variable rectangular or variable structured uh, non uniform structured grid etc and if the geometry is very very complicated this kind of meshing is not at all possible so then what we are going to do we use unstructured we makes if it is a 2d diagram 2d case we will make triangles or if it is three dimensional case we will make this kind of tetrahedrons for meshing process so this is an example for an unstructured mesh so what might be the reason for considering unstructured mesh as well as structured mesh so there are some advantages for as well as advantages as well as disadvantages for unstructured as well as structured mesh so one of the major difference between the structured and unstructured mesh so as i know as we know you know the basics of cfd especially finite difference etc we divide the domain into small pieces and we use certain notations like i j indices for identifying a particular cell so we know that this property values of this particular cell will be influenced by the surrounding cells so obviously when we try to solve these equations in that particular cell we should know what are their neighbors who are their neighbors so for structured mesh we can easily identify the neighbors if it is ij the neighbors are i plus 1 j i minus 1 j in the x direction and j plus 1 and j minus 1 in the y direction so it is possible for us to easily identify the neighbors if we are using a structured mesh but on the other hand this is an example for a unstructured mesh that is if you want to find the neighbors so you can see this zero cell if i want to find the neighbors 1 13 9 okay and if i want to find the neighbors for 1 cell number 1 0 2 6 so it will be very difficult for us to identify a relationship for the neighboring cells we may have sometime we may have multiple triangular cells also here so for solving we should know the neighboring states and for structured mesh neighbors found by adding or subtracting one cell from each cell in this so if it is a three dimensional body we will have ij and k also so for unstructured mesh what happens we should also save the list of neighbors so that will actually add more storage that will actually add some more matrices so when we deal with all these matrices obviously the time taken for computation will increase significantly but for complicated geometries so when when we cannot use structured mesh unstructured mesh are used so when we consider mesh we should also consider the quality of the mesh so mesh quality decides the solution accuracy as well as convergence so for a rectangular geometry we can make a simply rectangular box kind of cells or hexagonal boxes but when we have a curvature when we have some obstacles within the domain that is not possible 
so sometime these measures will be skewed or these measures will have certain aspect ratios etc so we keep certain conditions to know whether these measures mesh quality is sufficient or not so some of the there are multiple uh, properties some of them one two, few of them are like skewness aspect ratio etc so as you know uh, this is an example for a skewed cell and yes these are some example for uh, equilateral triangle and skewed triangle so for better solution we should avoid minimal cell skewness for better solution we should keep minimal cell skewness and suitable aspect ratio if you are talking about aspect ratio between 0.2 to 5 is preferred so if you have more aspect ratio or very less aspect ratio we should do some prop uh, some arrangement to make this suitable aspect ratio within a preferred range this is just an example so depending upon the situations these numbers may vary but these are the conditions some of the conditions to check the quality of the mesh so how do we do uh, mesh generation in open form so in open form there are two utilities okay mesh generation so we can use a block mesh utility as well as snappy hex utility like snappy hex mesh utility so block mesh is a very simple utility that is used for making meshes for a simple geometries and snappy hex mesh can deal with complex geometries so along with that so meshing along with the inbuilt utilities available in the open form it is also possible to use third party software so that there are certain open source software as well as commercial software available a dedicated machine software are available and if you are having if you are comfortable by with these softwares what we can do we can actually generate the mesh there we can easily import these meshes into open form and we can make the case studies we can run the simulations etc so some of the open source softwares for making meshing we are like salom g mesh etc and commercial and this icm cfd hyper mesh etc these are some of the examples there are couple of more examples for open source as well as commercial softwares so in this so what happens is when we make a geometry as well as when we make a mesh in a third party software what we need to do we need to save those uh, meshes in a certain format so open form support multiple formats say for an example dot msh can be saved when we use ansys software dot msh type mesh can be saved and it will be very easy for us to convert msh file to a geomet uh, to a open form readable format i have a small demo in the upcoming slide so these are the other options like ansys to form cfx to form so only thing is you open the terminal copy paste copy paste msh file or to that particular folder and type this command ansys mesh to form or cfx to form so it will automatically the mesh in that format to open form readable format okay so fluent 3d mesh to form fluent mesh to form these are the commands so i will show a small demo so this is an animation actually you can just see i'm just typing fluent mesh to form followed by the file name okay this is a terminal and elbow.msh is the Uh, file name and I'm just opening that in a para form. You can see in para form it will open now. So if you have dot msh file, then very easy or uh, msh or any other open form readable format, you can easily uh, load this into open form readable format. Okay. So I'll just quickly give a brief overview about block mesh. So block mesh is one of the simplest. meshing utility available in open form so probably in in the previous forenoon session you were continuously using block mesh file to generate the mesh generate the geometry etc so whenever we type block mesh in the terminal what happens is it will automatically read a file called block mesh dict file which is available in the system folder so whatever in informations available in the system folder in the block mesh dict file so whenever we type block mesh command it will read that command then act accordingly so if all those information what are required we should give those details in the block mesh dict file and when we type block mesh what happens it decomposes the domain into one or more hexahedral blocks as per our instructions given in the block mesh dict file and it is not just a rectangular domain it is also possible for us to have curved line arc spine based edges also so as as you can see here i just showed only one example that is 
and all these points are connected with the straight line so it is also possible for us to make curved geometries using block mesh files so in order to make a geometry so when when we talk about geometry generation and meshing we should know what are the major things which are required so in order to make a geometry so let us say i am going to use i am going to make a lead driven cavity problem so we know that we need to make a rectangular block right so what all things are required first we will start with the points so we should know the coordinates of the points then what we do we will connect those points with lines so we are going to connect these points first i will make the one second i will make the box then i will make the points so we'll start with actually points okay so coordinates of these points let's say i keep this as origin and length height width as unity let's say 1 1 and 1 so we will be able to know this is 0 0 0 and then if we are defining this as x direction this as y direction and z direction accordingly obviously you know how to make identify these coordinates let's say so we have four points or vertices so we have certain we have points so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so we'll start with the eight points or simply we can say vertices and we will connect these points with lines so we got a framework then we should know uh, how to make a rectangular box or hexadecimal box from by connecting these points okay so that's what i wrote here so first we will start with the points then we will connect that then we will make a block hexadecimal box then we should also given boundaries we should also uh, identify the boundaries let's say it's a lead driven cavity problem we keep the top wall as a moving wall and all other walls like this wall this wall and this wall as a fixed wall and the front and back we keep as front and back right then only we will be able to apply boundary conditions in the initial that is zero folder or initial conditions etc okay so this is an example for a block mesh dict file taken from a cavity tutorial so cavity is one of the simple example we will always start with when we talk when we teach open form so cavity tutorial as madam already mentioned the practical significance etc it's already mentioned in the foreknown session so okay before that i hope all of you are using a uh, ubuntu based system in my case uh, for teaching purpose i use a software called blue cfd so it is very friendly for the windows systems and i will if you want i can show you a small demo also so the software name is blue cfd it is blue cfd 2020 which is based on uh, open form 8 i guess so i just copied so in for known session most of the time what you are doing is you are copy pasting all those things with the help of terminal command so the advantage if you use ubuntu system or blue cfd here you don't need to do you don't need to do command based things some of the things you can actually do with the help of gui for an example i copy pasted cavity tutorial in the desktop are you able to see my desktop desktop yes yes sir yes, yes, sir. yes. okay so i'm just going to right click and open terminal so automatically my terminal may take some time ah so automatically the terminal location is here that is i just mentioned the sample cases and cavity i just kept it in the desktop so desktop for c 2024 and sample cases cavity etc and i can start entering the commands like block mesh okay and let's say paraform etc so if i want to open uh, block mesh file block mesh dict file i can just go to system folder and i will just open it in the notepad the same thing whatever you did using gedit etc so yes this is a typical block mesh file uh, you can find in a cavity tutorial so this is a these are header files it will be common for all files we will start from here so there are certain conditions so there are certain commands that is convert to meters then vertices okay then vertices set of certain uh, coordinates are given here then something called blocks then edges and bound, boundaries in boundary you can see the start from here to here and finally merge patch pairs okay 
so these things are not used here in this example so it is empty here and edges are also empty here and the basic thing is as i said we are going to identify the points so i hope you remember in the previous case we saw that we defined certain points right so this was the uh, rectangular block we consider earlier so all these points are identified with the help of these coordinates so vertices followed by certain numbers so here we start with these numbers starting from zero so i just i'm just going to give this a zero then 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so you have eight points so starting from zero we will have up to seven so this is the point zero let's say this is origin so this is zero then 1 zero i am just going to define the axis that is x then y then z so this is one point number one then two then three then four you can see four zero zero point one so in z direction this is four five six seven so we are essentially naming basically in names are not actually available here <coughs> okay the, we follow a certain uh, set of instructions already be, it's already there in, within the open form so this is this is point number 0 1 2 3 etc okay so we defined a set of uh, coordinates in vertices command okay then followed by you can see blocks in block there is a command called hex hex is essentially making a hexagonal block by connecting these points 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay if you just rearrange this then then it will show some error okay so there is a, a certain uh, order in which we should keep these points so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 and it is followed by a certain numbers that is 20 21 so in for noon i think It's already discussed. Basically, 20 indicates the number of divisions in x direction, then y direction, and z direction. So this is a two-dimensional flow problem. So we are not considering any division in the z direction. And x and y direction, 20 and 20, it's given. And simple grading followed by certain numbers. So basically, if you want a non-uniform mesh, as I discussed earlier, so it is possible to keep expansion ratio values in the x direction, y direction, z direction here. Expansion ratio is the ratio between the maximum cell width to minimum cell width and based on that we will get non uniform meshes okay then what else we have we have boundaries it's shown here actually so boundaries so we know that we identify the points like 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 etc then we need to know we already made by using a hex command we already made a hexagonal block right so now what we need to do we need to identify the boundaries so for an example as i said earlier for a moving wall we know that top wall is moving wall so 3 7 6 2 are the corners or vertices so we are going to identify that boundary by using this command small command so we we can also define the type wall type that is the boundary type so it can be wall it can be patches it can be inlets or other options are also available and we will be mentioning this vertices numbers here 3762 so 3762 so similarly when we talk about fixed walls all these walls like left side wall right side wall and bottom wall are fixed walls so we need to indi we can indicate all those things in a single command like faces 0473 0473 that means the left hand side wall 2651 uh 2651 and finally 1540 1540 okay and similarly front and back wall also 37 sorry uh, 4 5 6 7 and 0 3 2 1 okay so same thing i just indicated as a function if it is these coordinates are given as a function let's say Uh, lx is the length in the x direction ly in the length in y direction lz is the length in z direction i just indicated that yes so basic purpose of these commands in an uh, block mesh convert to meters basically it's a scaling factor so let us say you identify the coordinates uh, in meters and for a, some purpose you just need to scale down or scale up uh, geometry is essentially same 
so instead of length one unit in one meter in x direction one meter in z direction one meter in the uh, y direction if you want to make the same geometry same mesh but 0.1 meter then there is a command called convert to meter at the beginning of the block mesh so that's what you can see here so this is a scaling factor the multiple this particular factor you can multiply with throughout the coordinates such a way that you can easily scale down or scale up the geometry right that is the purpose of convert to meters then vertices basically list the um, vertex coordinates and edges by default the edges they will connect with you you might have noticed previous case the edges it was empty yes it was empty earlier if, from this uh, block mesh edges so by default if you are not mentioning edges then it will automatically identify that as a straight line so if you want a curved edges you want arc spine poly spline etc that is also possible so then blocks ordered list of vertex labeled with label labels and mesh sizes and boundary it's a sub directory of boundary patches and default patch means optional entry describing in default patches sometimes we use to give type as patches sometimes we can give wall etc and in some cases especially when we apply periodic boundary conditions etc we should also identify who are the neighbors so we use a parameter called merge patch pairs etc so it's an optional list of patches to be merged so when we use a periodic boundary conditions or a cyclic type boundary condition we should know what where is the inlet and where is the outlet and what uh, what is a master uh, as a ma what is a master boundary and slave boundary etc and we need to merge all those points etc so in that scenario we will be using merge patch pairs so these are the basic commands we can it is we can do lot of things with this basic block mesh utility itself so so in the previous example you saw we are defining all these vertices manually right so if you just open manually in the sense all these coordinates we are actually uh, entering manually so what happens if you are continuously dealing with this kind of geometry with uh, let's say different dimensions so let us say your faculty your uh, teacher want you to do an effect of aspect study aspect ratio on lid driven cavity problem that is aspect ratio in the sense so he is asking you to make a rectangular geometry with 1 by 1 then let's say 2 by 1 and let's say 2 by 3 etc so typically what you can do is you can identify the coordinates each and every time and repeat the calculations so we can also do one more thing we can define the length in x direction length in y direction length in z direction as a variable so instead of defining all these things coordinates as an individual uh, coordinate values so what we can do is also possible to make these as a variable for an example i have an another slide here so i am just going to define variables in this case a length in x direction as 4 length in y direction as 8 length in z direction as 2 okay i am just divide, de defining lx ly lz etc so this won't be this this one you won't find in existing cavity tutorial or any other tutorial so i am just going to define lx ly lz similarly i am also defining the number of divisions in x and x y z directions etc with certain notations like nx ny and nz so now in vertices folder vertices vertices section what i am going to do is and just going to recall these values these variables so instead of writing 1 2 3 1 1 0 etc i am just going to recall lx ly lz because we have you know that we have a pattern over there so when we recall it we should always use a symbol like dollar symbol dollar lx so this is 000 000 then 100 010 10 so you can see all these numbers are replaced with these variables so similarly here 20 21 was there earlier that is number of division in x direction number of division in y direction and number of division in z direction so what i did i just use these formulas i just recall this using the dollar symbol so first we need to define the variable then we will be using these variables with the help of this dollar symbol we will be replacing the vertices then the number of divisions etc uh, in the block with the help of these variables so i have another uh, demo you can see cavity tutorial so then the block mesh file what i am going to do is i'm just defining as i said earlier the l x l y l z n x n y n z etc 
and all those coordinates are based on that variables then i'm just going to call block mesh so when i type block mesh it will automatically call block mesh dict file and execute whatever we mentioned there so then we will see the results in para form so this is an example for uh, four four two i just give dimension x direction four and y direction four and is a direction two okay so now what i am going to do is i'm just going back to the block mesh file i'm just changing it to let's say eight so y direction i am just changing it only at this variable i am changing that's it and again i'm calling block mesh and opening it in para form you can see the y direction is two times than that of x direction and rest of the things remain same and number of relations everything is same what i did instead of writing the coordinates each and every time i just use that as the, yes now we can see number of divisions in z direction right now it is one i'm just going to consider that as two again calling block mesh then para form So instead of one division in the other direction, you can see two divisions came. So this is just an example or demo. It is also possible for us to make variables as the coordinates and <coughs> do the operations, which can take a uh, save significant amount of time. Right. So some other possible geometries I already explained with my students. Very simple thing with a combination of you can see starting with a rectangular block, ending with a, a circular cylinder. So this is an example rectangular block with a concave or some arc is cut here. So this is a, a donut kind of structures. Then this is a carved pipe. This is a simple rectangle. This is simple uh, pipe, the hollow pipe, then stepped uh, structure. Then instead of this, we have a convex uh, structure and even helical spring also, which is possible for us to do with block mesh. So in tomorrow's session, what I'm going to do is we will be discussing so right now we only discussed about a um, single block so when we have a complicated geometry some cases it is also possible for us to make the geometry and mesh in block mesh so we should know how to make uh, complex geometries by using multiple blocks so we use certain thing called we use multiple blocks and some boundaries we need to merge etc are there so the details regarding that will be discussed in tomorrow for known session okay so these are the reading materials as i said earlier the documentation part so especially if you have a doubt if you want to systematically study anything in open form is very limited so whatever point i discuss especially related to block mesh file it's already available in the open form user gate so if you don't know where this user gate it's very easy you can find it in your computer itself when you install open form solver you will be able to get you will be having the user gate also in in the folder so wherever you install open form so in this case i am using blue cfd core folder so in core folder or if you are let's say you use open form 5 or open form 7 you go to that particular folder then you can see doc folder in that guides you will find user guide so this is a user guide so approximately around 1 240 pages so you can That's go good. through I, yes. I have not doubt uh, this uh, this is not the ubuntu version na that's the open forum you, you are using no 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 so this is which version this is which uh, your cfd in this workshop the uh, ubuntu based version they are giving instructions so it's better to follow that in the right ubuntu version na uh, i actually getting hard from, uh, from the saturday sunday uh, i stop lunch and uh, uh, and bathing also for the study that the the command prompt the uh, that the, the that's the that's the thing i'm struggling struggling that part only but yes, i installed uh, through the cfd team from uh, yes. uh, the ma'am has told yes i will share you yeah i will share you my experience in 10 year back when documentations were not there what happened is i was the first one especially in it madras I, in from my lab i was the first one to begin learning this open form so there was no one to help me at that point of time i took one week to install open form properly 
the thing is the during that one week we will also learn what not to do what are the other things where we made mistake so initially the learning curve is actually steep you will learn lot of things what is not required immediately but in later stage you will realize that they are all are important that will help you in another way so yes sir yes sir because yes, i yes, i experiencing it after my graduation mm-hmm. i started that uh, that two years of the, the the lockdown came the whole whole day i was studying and understanding my own three own uh, using that 24 hours how it is co- co- covering to studying myself only only the self study okay. i can understand okay. okay yeah so this version i am using is actually blue cfd so the thing is i just you i am just using it but in this workshop they use different version so the tutorial they provide may have some compatibility issue if you are using blue cfd one okay because that is based on different version of open form this is based on open form 7 so the workshop they are in i think workshop they are using open form 8 right or 7 Nine, nine, sir. We are using nine, 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 yes, nine. Yes, nine, nine. nine. So you, you may experience some compatibility issues, especially when they share the tutorials to try to reproduce it. Okay, it is also possible for you to install it separately, and you can work later on. Okay, so with this, I will just thank you, sir. Have, yes, thank you. So I have another important that I will cover in the next tomorrow's session because after explaining some other things, I will explain this. Some interesting features in open form. Okay, so with this, I will end my session. Any doubts? Yes, sir. I want to ask something. Uh, in the block mesh file, block mesh dict file, you have yeah. shared. Yes. Uh, suppose we are using block mesh for creating the background mesh for snappy hex mesh. Yeah. So whether we have to provide the patch names or boundary patches in that or not. if we don't need that in the final geometry uh, mesh that i am actually not sure i was using block mesh independently not for snappy hex mesh okay. so you are saying for snappy hex mesh patch names are required or not that i am not sure john are you familiar with this yes uh, actually i was facing that problem in some pro- uh, uh, geometry okay. because i i didn't need them so i just named them all faces and like that and after okay. that in the final mesh i didn't need them these faces only the internal geometry mesh i needed fine 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 so that i am not sure maybe someone from fosi can answer this okay sir thank you sir. yes thank you. yes pranay uh, yeah sir so my, my doubt is is there any what is the advantage of using a, a block mesh type of uh, like a command like block block mesh instead of a gui based open source software like what what is the more flexibility we get uh, in terms of using um for creating mesh fine you i in the last slides do you remember i just showed one uh, demo of converting geometries let's say with a different aspect ratio yes gui sir. also it may be possible but automation and all it is very very convenient if you use this block mesh kind of uh utilities gui let's say you want to make aspect ratio 1 is to 1 then 1 is to 2 1 is to 5 etc each time you need to make the geometry you need to di- uh, divide it in number of cells etc on the other hand simply if you just modify the existing block mesh file and just give the flexibility within a fraction of minutes you will be able to do it so automation and all to some extent it is very very convenient okay got it thank you yeah 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 you can those who are already asked you can just drop your hands now and uh, someone else uh, deepak yadav yes 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 tell me sir actually in ensis yes. fluent if yeah, you yeah. define a for good meshing we have a different parameters like uh, orthogonal quality should be greater than 0.1 and skewness less than 0.8 such types of parameter also uh, available in open form it is possible to check the quality by simply typing check mesh so check you mesh. will be yes check mesh if you just type check mesh in the terminal so you will be able to identify some parameters like i will show you on second so i already made a geometry in cavity just types check mesh c h e c k m should be capital so so they are identifying something like uh, skewness let's say minimum face area minimum maximum max fit ratio then they are saying okay they are okay then minimum cell openness there are as i said skewness and aspect ratio are only few things two things 
it is also possible there are multiple parameters so maximum skewness also they are saying okay so if you just type a check mesh command so they will all automatically calculate all those parameters which are related to the quality of the mesh and they will say if it is not okay they will say it's not okay okay you can see not non orthogonality check okay so this is only sir, here also, also yes 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 sir sir here also range uh, should lies between 0 to 1 depends depends for uh, for yes, that skewness skewness uh, i am not sure what are the conditions they kept in the check mesh command they might have kept some uh, value range in which if it is between this and this and this then they will say it's okay otherwise it, they will say it is okay. there are some issues this is only for uh, post processing like in the in the sense you already made the mesh and you are checking the quality but what you ask this is it possible for ansys to make mesh by keeping this as about uh, n conditions that's okay. what you are asking are you saying uh, it is possible to make mesh by keeping some maximum skewness let's say 10 raised to minus 1 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, is it? That I'm not sure. Yes, sir. In inches, uh, we can check what is the mesh quality and uh, what is the smoothness. That is, and the that is after making mesh, right? Before making, it is not possible, right? Yes, sir. Possible. After making. Yes, ah, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. For after that, you can just type. Yes, you in can just type. Mesh, in fluent meshing and inches meshing in both. Both. Fine, fine. That is also possibly type. Yes, sir. Check mesh. That's it. will get all these values if it is not okay they will say there, there are some errors okay thanks so mm. uh, hello sir uh, yes yes sibin tell me okay i am working on speed tank simulations in open what so what simulation what simulation speed tank speed tank speed tank speed tank speed tank okay okay okay, okay. okay. mixing yeah. so i tried uh, snappy xmesh utility initially but uh, when i run check mesh uh, it always generate some orthogonality errors or skewness so now i am importing uh, mesh from ansys so i feel it difficult to mesh in uh, snappy xmesh okay uh, so what do you suggest uh, it is better so it to is import actually, uh, see if you have a commercial license then if time is an important parameter then you can directly use that otherwise it is possible i have seen still tank some in youtube and all i have seen they use yeah uh, if i uh, follow the tutorial uh, it yes. works but if i if we create our own geometry generating this generating error Okay. Okay. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. It is cover. Is it? It is covering in this workshop or not? Snappy XMesh. I am not sure. Okay. It is there. John. No, sir. We are not doing Snappy. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay, Raghavendra. So my question is about importing the external mesh files to open yes. form. So yes. whenever we execute the command like ansys to form, it will write poly mesh file in the constant folder. Yes. But the problem is the zero folder files, which are initial and boundary condition, yes. they have the values defined at different different patches. Yes. So when we import the file, do we have to manually modify yes. the? Yes. Yes. Manually modify, yes. especially inlet, outlet, now naming, etc. Uh, then you need to manually modify that. Uh, is there any way to synchronize these UNP files? Any Python code or anything? As of now, I'm not familiar. I did manually. Okay. Because you see, the name in which you give will be different from the others, right? So inlet someday it will be small letter, someday it will be capital letter. So manually only I was doing it. Maybe some codes may be available. I'm not sure. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Hello, sir. Yes. Yeah, so like uh, in the block mesh dict file, yeah. uh, so we have given vertices, right? So yes. From vertices, it is constructing an hexagonal block, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, my question is like, in which order it is connecting the vertices uh, to form the block? Because you mentioned that sorting of the vertices is important. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So the thing is, there is some order. So uh, that details is available in the user guide. One second. Okay. Uh, right now i don't remember some clockwise direction some uh, some order is there one second so if you go to chapter number 5 mesh generation and uh, conversion the user guide so all these details are available let me check if you are giving wrong order that will actually results in some error sir above that same thing just above that yeah. just above it Ah, uh, just above it, or sort of little bit. That one diagram was there, I think. Ah, uh, yeah. this diagram, yes. this diagram. Yes. So, not oh. here. 
one second one second somewhere else we have an additional reading material on that sir. we we can provide them okay we means fossi fossi has an additional reading material on that oh, on the sequence oh, oh, oh okay fine 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 yeah yeah so right now they are saying it's a right handed system so yes. there is a pattern if you see o x o y o z all those things it should move in clockwise direction so in that way we should uh, uh, consider the points if you are giving a wrong uh, number systems or numbers that will uh, leads to error Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Hari Krishnan. Yeah. Thank you very much. Extremely uh, helpful for the students, I guess. Uh, the thank way you. you were explaining it is really very appreciable. Thank you. 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 Thank you.